the first original sketch that you see here, inspired by a bee that I saw at work, just on a window, and I'm like, it's very fluffy, it's very cute, and you know what, I think I see, an, I think I see a character from this, and lo and behold, yes, yes, we have ourselves a lovely character. So, Dandelion is a bee kind of fairy... And we're going to add some sci-fi into this as well. She's an alien. Now, the depths of her background and her world is still is still simmering. So I haven't really got it together yet. Don't know how to... I haven't constructed a reality based upon bees and what they do. Not yet so far. For now... Sort of trying to get this character's look right. Okay, let's see. There you go, that's a good pencil. But I won't do too much here. Now, so to match the bee's kind of fluff, the bee's fluffiness, we went ahead and went with a nice fro up top here. Kind of works pretty nicely, and also some fluff around this jacket. This jacket is to be black. This here is to be like a yellowish brown, sort of like the sort of like a bee. Let me go ahead and take a hop towards my Twitter for a moment. And show you guys the original image I took. Pardon me, this will be just a moment. Okay, Twitter, you want to be like that? All right, fine. Uh, here we go. Ah, la la, da 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 da. Here we go. Let me go find that picture real quick. Sit tight. Let's just hop to it. There we go. Walk in and we walk in and we're running and we're running and found a stick bug. There it is. And let's put it on the desktop. Save it there. Good, good. All right, let me open it up real quick. This is the original image I took of the B, I have to say, that's actually a pretty good shot from a phone. Mind you, my phone's not the best at taking pictures. But yes, so here's the wonderful cusker, and we got the black, of course, because of its beautiful legs. We got a good-sized butt, and I plan on putting a good-sized butt on her. The wings caught, catches my attention pretty, pretty well, because I want to get those wings right, make it look fairy-like, make it look insect-like too. So a mystical insect, to put it simply. And then this color scheme right here, right here. This on the top area right here, that's the color scheme I'm going for her, for the fluff around her jacket. Fluff around her jacket will have a bright kind of coloring here, transition to a lighter brown, then to a dark splash. Look at that. That's, that's the kind of fluff I'm looking for. And it has to look fluffy. The um, the leggings, though, that one's a black and yellow stripe configuration where it will go at an angle like this from her waist down. It will be stripes going like this. But once it gets to her knees, it's going to alternate and go the opposite direction. Why? Mm, just, just... Just as a thought, just for style purposes. I think it looks nice. It'll make it look interesting. Shoes, I don't know what to put as her shoes. Whether it'd be just like a simple, simple feet like this. And all this is like huge leggings. And, ooh, actually, this is a really good foot. Hooray for me, this is a good foot something like that or or I may have heels 
I am thinking of putting heels, but then again, I don't know if that would really be necessary. I think we can go without the heels, have it more like socks, because the socks are actually pretty good pieces of technology. Artificial gravity boots. That can be nice. Anywho, details about that and her world and all those features will come later. For now, this is got to keep this in mind, this color sc scheme for the fluff. Let's go and hop to the first coloring. No, I don't want to say it, but thank you for asking. The first coloring of it, yes, it's messy because I was just trying to get something out there. Uh, I didn't color this properly. In my mind, um, I had her in her room, which I plan on doing uh, a separate image for how her room's going to look like. It's, it's a very simple, simple apartment kind of... Uh, it's just like an apartment similar to a honeycomb shape with some more uh, depth. Let me Let me go put a nice little... Example of how it would look. Put it, insert a new layer, Karita, and fill this with white so we can have something to write on. <sighs> Ploop. Good. Good. Now a little spot for us to draw. Much obliged. So her apartment, I'm going to go ahead and take a nice. We're going to look at this 3D perspective here. So. There's our Y, our Z, and our X. Whoops, X. So her apartment would be like this, where it would be honeycombs or hexagons or octagons. I think they're hexes. So let's go put this one, two, three. Four, five, six. Okay. So you have yourself a door. Nice little fancy sci fi door. Shoot, it should be a little better than that. Probably be vertical for aesthetics. And it will expand out. And then you have a larger end over here. Now, she has a nice apartment where this larger end, there is a balcony. She can view the city or her, her hive. Just small, small establishment, nothing, nothing too big. Um, it's one room, but I have to make it a fair sized room. Don't know exactly how to furnish it yet. It's... Again, this is still pretty raw in the making. Pretty, pretty raw. Here we go. And she has a nice little... Still keeping the whole hexagon aesthetics, or shape, or theme. Here we go. We're going to have hexagon... Balcony. Yeah. It's a little messy. And we're going to have, let's say, a lightning bolt. No, not a lightning bolt. It may be shaped similar to... Should it be like a heart valve? Ooh, that would be intriguing. That's a thought. But yeah, something like this where it gradually expands out to a nice bright open window. Maybe we'll have her bed here or something. Or maybe this is like a kitchen. Who knows? I don't know what they're going to eat. I don't know those details. Again, all pretty raw. So maybe this is how she's gonna, gonna be where she eats and such, but okay, let me not deviate too far from the main, the main goal of this stream. The main goal here is to develop the character herself. We will start with the physical imagery. I will probably get to a bio a lot further down the road. Characters and the way they spawn sometimes. Now you don't need to save that. Thank you. Oh man, the way they come up. It's, it's, inspiration comes from absolutely anywhere. And that's what I love about it. Now, 
something else about this character. The her soul. Yes, I'm gonna go into her soul. Her personality is so is similar to um um it, it kind of gives that uh how to put it Alicia Keys. <clears throat> there. Alicia Keys and her music inspired this character's personality. Her personality being sort of a uh, she's she's a uh, let me go put that image back up. She's a um, hard worker, modest, full of spirit, motivational. And she, yeah, she, she works hard, long hours, but wants something more in life. That's, that's what I'm kind of getting from this character. She wants something more in life than her mundane day-to-day -day routine of working around in the hive. Now, eventually, I'm going to come up with an idea where she will have to either by force get out there or she will sort of run and leave the hive, which I would put it as a treasonous kind of thing. Blasphemy, a taboo of her community. Why would you want to leave the hive? It's, it's a nice place, plenty of food, comfortable. You just gotta fend off uh, the pirates. Which, I'm not sure if it's gonna be bees versus wasps. Shoot, I might throw spiders in there. This is going to be an insect-based uh, reality here. It's interesting. It's insect, but also fantasy. Because she got to look like a fairy, though. Got to look like a fairy. But also the characteristics of a bee. So these wings will not look like they would work to, to help her fly. Because, come on, if you look at a bee, the bee's... Bees thick as heck, man, and it's it's flying around these tiny wings just fine. It's a baffling. If we can do that with our technology, make drones that big drones that fly with just the smallest of propellers. I mean, we can, but there's it's going to be, whew, it's going to be hella hard. It's a lot easier to use a larger propeller set to do that. Yeah. Difficulties. Okay, so this was a mess because I was working with Krita. I'm not too familiar with Krita. I made a few mistakes in my uh, methods. So I was just like, you know, screw it. I'm going to just, just pile things on. Just plop, 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 plop. Just go nuts. Okay, all right, so I got a coloration, I got sketch. <sighs> oh man, this takes a while. Now, to do this again. Oh boy, this is gonna take a while, but that's fine. This is a labor of love. Let's hope it stays that way. Let's do... Okay, I'm going to do a long... Let me go. That portrait. I'm going to do it long ways. Okay, let's first organize everything. I'm going to put a new group. I'm going to name this group... Sketches. Sketches. And I, I wonder if I should do line work. Hmm, I've never done line work in Krita. Anyone who has, tell me how it is. Because <laughs> this... Um, is it easy to do? Because I'm familiar with GIMP. I've used GIMP for the longest of time. And it's probably why it's more easier for me to use GIMP. Although I wish GIMP was a little smoother with some things. Especially the uh, vector pen tool. Oh, vectors are a lifesaver. Okay then, here we go. So we got sketches. 
This is this is how I typically this is the process I usually go through. I always start with sketches. And then let's do another group layer. And from there I put after sketches then comes the lines. The line work. And let me do a quick one over here. Where is it? Group layer. And this is gonna be basic colors. Okay, and that goes under line work. We go sketches, line work, and okay. Now I leave the background for last. Well, second to last. If you want to be technical, because the background's going to give me additional information about how the character is going to look. Because the background is going to give information about lighting, the environment, the atmosphere. So background. Here we go. Okay, so. All this is going to be in order. Lines up top, basic colors are above the lines. Sketches are going to be below all of that. Background and layers. That's, this goes everywhere. That goes everywhere. Um, here's what I'm going to do with you. I'm going to put you as blank. I like to have this blank here. Can I lock the lock its contents, composition, undo history? Um, there you go. Lock. Literally a lock right next to it. <laughs> nice. Okay, we're gonna lock this all in here. What is this? Oh, that looks like it's locked. There we go. Lock this here. Can it do anything? Good, good. Just so I can have something in the background and so it doesn't look like this. I see all these wonderful little checker pieces. I don't want to see those checker pieces. I don't want to accidentally draw on the background layer as well, which this is the biggest issue when it comes to digital drawing. And if any of you guys want to get into digital art, this is the biggest thing that people make, biggest mistake artists will make is they don't pay attention to which layer they're drawing in because when you're getting in the groove yeah when you're getting in the groove and you're drawing you forget which layer you're on it will happen try to just keep focus when you do and <laughs> you can draw and color and shade all these things in one layer and then maybe you want to get rid of uh, a layer and you, you end up getting rid of s essential pieces of your drawing. And you're like, oh, I got to do it all again. And it's just another, it's time wasted. And if you're doing, com and when you're doing it for a business, for, for, for money, you can't waste time. Time is essential. Okay, it's very, very important. So don't be surprised if you do com if you ask for commissions from an artist, and an artist does like this complex work in under I don't know under an hour. Some people get upset about that too. I'm like, oh my gosh, this person does it so quickly. Why are they charged so much? Okay, <laughs> look, all right. Each person is is asking for commissions. Okay, that's that can be hundreds of people, and they. And you got life expenses to pay. You, you're gonna have to ask for a higher price, right? It's it's sort of unavoidable here, unless it's a small thing like maybe an icon for your for social media or maybe a banner. But expect high prices to be high. Don't try to negotiate the price lower. It's it's a bit rude to do that. Okay, it's a bit rude, especially the amount of time and dedication they do for each image i mean it's all unique it's all handcrafted it's all just for just for you know the person who asked for commissions you know it's all personalized and people complain oh it's too it's so expensive oh my gosh i can i can draw this i mean if you say that then what happened to you hmm? exactly but honestly there's so many times I've seen artists on... Oh, no. What's going on? No, Krita, accept my pen tablet. No, why you do this? This is... I've seen so many times on uh, 
Oh, shoot. All right. Got to start Creed all over again. So many times I ran into uh, posts about artists doing emergency commissions. Because the, the amount that they're getting in is just not enough. So they're like, okay, just, just ask away and we get these done quickly. You know, it's hard being an artist. It really is. A lot of the famous artists out there that are probably doing well have died already. Famous artists don't get famous until either uh, after their death or if they're lucky during their life. It's a lot of poets in the past were like that. I mean, luckily now people can get recognition a lot quicker. Good old help of the internet. But man, from the past, you got some wonderful poets that could have made good money in their lives, could live just fine, comfortable. But I just couldn't get their stuff out. So sad. Well, enough about... Uh, ooh, ooh, pardon my yawn there. Oh, yeah, shit. Shoot, now I gotta reestablish all these things again. Okay, here we go. How many group players? There was like three, right? That's one, two, three. I'm tasting peanut butter for some reason. I don't know why. Ah. Let me get this group layer out of here. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Sketches, color, basic sketches. Oh, there's four groups. Whew. So, here we go. We got background. I'm going to use my mouse for accuracy. Here we go. Background. Sketches. And also, if you're getting into digital art, organization is going to be a big thing. Okay, so this is piece of color. That's galore. Whoops. Get English. Details. Details is what I call it. Or detail colorings and the such. I'm going to go save this as Dan the Lion fleshed out. There we go. Um, ba, ba, ba. gotta put it in the right spot. Gotta put it in the right spot. Man, I've been talking a lot. Oh, actually, yeah, I'm thirsty. Hold on. I will be back in a hot second.
Alrighty, we're done with that hot minute. Let's go ahead and move on to getting this character through. Alright. This is the beginning stages. Whew. Okay. This is going to get me a little uneasy. Cause... Let's see, digital. I don't... Well, let me save this first. Is it saved? Yes, okay. It's good. Good. Save frequently, too. Word of advice. Save frequently. I mean, I rarely have Krita crash for me. But I've had another program I use, Shotcut, for video editing. Ah, even with this, uh, uh, these, uh, this powerful, nice PC that I have, built nice gaming PC, it still occasionally crashes. It still does. Alright then, let's see. Let's go take... Is this... Wait, what? You're not registering my... Ah! Oh. Okay, settings. I do power through, blah, 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 tools. Um, can I find... Where's my settings? <sighs> settings, configure, create a manage resource. Toolbars, dockers, themes. Create a darker. Oh, cool. Yes, dark. Romantic. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, um. Configure toolbars. Configure Krita. Okay, where's tablet settings? Where's tablet Windows 8? Bit pointer input depends on Windows Ink experimental pressure tablet settings. Mm. Mm -hmm 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 -hmm. Why do you do this? General Windows tools what is this dock toolbar switch controls cursor cursor shape. No cursor, tool icon, arrow, small circle, crosshair. Okay. No outline. What am I doing? Show outline, effective size. Ooh. Yay, colors. Uh, this one. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah. What did I do? Oh, I made a little dot for myself. I like that because I lose track of the uh, the cursor sometimes, especially when you lightly touch something. Oh, wait, hey, it's back. It's working. Yay. Why? I don't know. Wait, why can't I? Oh, because it's not on actual stuff. Okay, sketches. Here we go. Let's uh, Let's get back to... Oh, whoa, whoa, sweet suffering sucker tath. Okay, here we go. That'll do. Oh wait, I love that detail. Okay, here we go. Sketches, sketches. Let's go and use some of their sketching tools. Take. Not the worst impressions. No, that's the side of the pen thing. There you go. Give me a. There you go. That's simple. Ah, ah I just might see it a little because we might be here a while. Okay. Pro personal problem I have. Every time I try to build. Every time I try to start from skeleton to muscle to skeleton to muscle to full on body, it it always seems elongated. I don't know why. So I'm gonna to try to see if I if I'm making a good square. Not sure what that means yet, but it, in my mind, it made sense making squares. So let me let me do a full body 
<sighs> a full body should. What do you, she should be doing? I think she should be standing. Uh, if we give her a prop, let's give her an edge to lean on. Here we go. My ever so unsteady hands. Okay, here we go. Prop. And let's put a floor. Here's our floor. Beautiful right angle. So she's going to be leaning against that. Whew. Now let's see how we're going to do this. Um. Hmm. Start with a skeleton here. Usually start with the middle section. Oh, her shoulder is going to be here. So let's go take note of that. Get some of that collar bonage here. Already, see, already she's going to look long. We have to increase their size. Increase the size, man. Here we go. We'll do that there. And we'll have a collarbone here. There we go. Now... Hmm. Oh, I speak. Okay, let me go and make a square. There we go. This will be her... Rib cage. Let's make a small niche little thing here. You know what? Let's just make her tall and skinny like a model. Let's just uh, prepare for the process. Prepare for the thought process of an artist. It's a mess. Okay, so. I remember she got a butt. She ain't like a wasp, which is just thin. Unless that's a joke. She's thin and tall, like a wasp. Different from her peers. Okay, so. Let's put a foot here, and a foot here. Um, full bodies. Okay, hold on, maybe she has, okay, skeleton then, we'll just do a loose skeleton. Um, Let's get let's get a plan here. So what if she's not leaning against anything? In fact, she's expressing the full joys of flight. <laughs> I saw this post once where it said there's two kinds of artists in the world. The ones who draw their faces to the left and the ones who draw their faces to the right. Okay, so... Let's uh, let's try middle section. We're gonna. I'm the guy that faces to the left, which confuses it for rights. So I'm directionally impaired. Let's make it into the rib cage, a shape of a lung. Okay, now the abdominal area, let me go and we need a reference. We need references. Okay then, can I get, can I search on Google female models without running into some spicy images? Uh, 
Uh, here we go. Let's do full full body. Please be wearing something modest. I don't I don't want nothing bad. There we go. Here we go. Um Okay. There's there's Okay. Something not so saucy. Oh, this one's a Oh my gosh, she looks awesome. Like a badass. Um Let's see. I don't please no bikini models. Uh Oh, here's the idea. Sportswear. Let me go sportswear. That's better. Sportswear. No. These are not sportswears. That is it. We're just going to do anatomy. Anatomy model. There we go. Oops. There you go. That's that's gross. Nope, not these. Um, female muscle model. No, these are bodybuilders. Gosh damn it, Google. You need to stop. Stop. I just want muscle net. You know, it's, you know, proportions. Let's go proportions. Drawing people. There. Let's just do that. Oh, this is actually cool. This is really cool, but it has booze in the thumbnail, so yeah, let's not do that. Um, which one's a nice? Ah, <sighs> why? Must this be so hard to find? Why is must this be so hard? They always talk about the size of heads. A head and a half. I can't really go by that. Fine. Screw it. We'll go by eye. And watch it become extra long for no reason. Okay, so. Well, there's our attempt. So let's go do a thing. A wonderful thing. Okay, so this is the direction she's facing. Now let's talk about finding the right harmony. Okay, so spine. Take note of spine. And let's imitate the shapes based upon. Oh, oh, wait, hey, that's an idea. Shapes. So if we have okay, so let's grab shoulder region. Okay. Well no. Collar, bone, shoulder. Maybe maybe a little more. Here we go. And let's go down this way. Uh-huh. Right, right. Right. And then we're gonna grab this way. Hourglass. And then this one, she's too small though. Make it bigger. Use this page. Just use this entire page. Like a coat hanger. Like a coat hanger. There we go. And we're gonna go swirl down here. And we're gonna grab this. And they're going to make sure this hourglass, the shoulders match the hips width at the least. Although her hips are a little bigger. She's a bee. She got the booty. Okay, then the... Here we go, this area here. Triangle. Um, now it's too big. Uh, damn. We'll work with it. Okay, so then we have leg. So here's our socket. Let's grab and full and 
No, I don't like it. Let's try it again. Okay, so. So many styles to work with. <sighs> rib cages. Rib cages. Sugar. Oh, darn. What time is it? Oh, come on. I'm going to get somewhere before. Because I have to get off soon. I got more things scheduled. So let's make this... Uh, okay. Um, that's... And let's do and let's go match the direction. Oh my, I'm getting reports now. Uh, nope, that's fine. Images there. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And then we're going to have a thing here. Go just trying to grab shapes. Very fascinating shape. And let's see. What we should be doing in the air. Okay, so shoulders, arms. Oh boy. Shoot, what kind of style would I do? So she's flying. Make her look graceful while she's doing it. Ooh, hands. Yeah, hands is another problem I got. Is she going to look elegant when she does that too? Can we grab the center? Is there a center here? That don't look so good. Let's just have it relax then. <laughs> this looks bizarre. It it always looks bizarre for me. Okay, let's put feet and feet. Okay, so this is just a basic rough sketch just to play with modeling here. Give me a neck. Give me a head. Maybe it needs to be a little bigger. Here we go. Now, proportionally, gotta step back and ask myself, does this look okay? Okay, let me go put a nice strong line here. Okay. Big bones, skinny bones. Just trying to see if I can grab a shape here. I don't have steady hands. I have very, very fittigy. Okay, issue here. This is short. That a little longer. Actually, I might make her more legs. She's not going to be too sh short of a person. She's going to have some height on her. Okay, these are shorter. Um, hands. Ooh, that's going to be a layer on in its own. Okay, before we proceed, does this look okay? I'm going to ask ourselves, does this look... Uh, are you happy with this? Do you think... It can be better. Always ask yourself. You always always strive to be better. It's always a good thing to do. When you're doing drawing, just look at it and be like, you know, does this, does this feel right? Does it feel right? And right now, this is I'm pre-planning. Sometimes, so sometimes if you have the image in your mind already, you know exactly how it looks like. Stare at a blank picture and try to take the image in your mind and fit it on there. And then whatever part of that image comes out to you most prominently, put it on first. Put it on, just spill it on there and go. 
And then from there, try to use that as a reference point for everything else. Try to hit the strongest part of your thought. That's, that's what usually helps when I just go off of a blank page. When I just do this, I try to picture the image. I see it on the uh, on this entire canvas. And then I will put a little thing here, a little thing there, then maybe another prominent thing that'll come out here, then a little thing here, a little thing here, then put a little thing there, and kind of build it piece by piece, and then it'll all come together, and then you might have a part here that you're so focused on, and it's just working well, and then you see the rest, and you just kind of add it in. But it's always good to not just focus on one piece and fill it up with detail. Kind of evenly fill out different spots with detail, with the same amount of detail. So something doesn't look overly detailed. When you look somewhere else, it's all like, <clears throat> you get lost. Now, unless you're better than me, which many people out there are, sad face. <laughs> if you're more, if art, if drawing really comes natural to you, you do what best fits to you. In fact, with art in general, you do what best fits for you learn your color theory though it's good to learn that because that's it's fundamental and it gives a universal language for artists to communicate their thoughts and such and ideas with other artists that that gives us a universal language to work with but from there then you you build in your own direction now, let's see um shoot Time is never with me, is it? <sighs> oh, man, my voice is getting rusty. Uh, time is never, never, never with me. All right, then. Well, if that's the case... Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have to end this session here. There's quite a few other things I have to work on today. And, um, let's see. So for this project that I'm doing here, this whole drawing process is only the beginning. After I get the drawing process done, I'm going to be getting the bio in there. After the bio, I want to make a small comic strip describing her environment, her world. How, um, just like a basic summary of who she is, her life, her universe, all of that detail. Whew, all of that good detail. She's going to be amazing. And, um, let's see. What else? What else? Uh, that's that's what's going to be happening with this project. As for this channel and such, of course, Twitch is going to be taking this small clip of this two-hour recording and putting it on here. I have other recordings with uh, a few other people. I've been working a lot with a person named Umahime. You can check her uh, channel out in Twitch. And also, I've been do I have I also put up some videos here and there of our of these streams and of um, of some other things I also do on my YouTube channel which just search up my username that you see here Edward J. Renicott on the search bar and you will see it I still have to put a link to it somewhere here I'm not sure if I have or not but I'll try to do that in the near future if I had time so it's the current events. That would be the contacts. Check me out on Twitter, too. I'm most active on Twitter. Again, same name, Edward J. Renegade. And it's kind of spelled as Edward. Edward. It's a strange name. I'll admit that. It's a strange name. Anywho. I thank you guys for joining me in this wonderful session. Can't wait to do a lot more next time. And I will see you all... On another day.
this Edward J. Renegade. And this, so oh, I still gotta work on my outro. My name is Edward J. Renegade. This has been the Starflight Lounge. <laughs>